Well, the Occupy Wall Street protest is going, even though four, 700 of them were arrested over the weekend now. Some of the demonstrators say they want an end to the banking industry. Others say they want free health care. And there have even been some anti-Israel signs in the crowd. So what exactly do they want? Newsday columnist Ellis Hennigan is here. Ellis, uh, seems like this group, <laughs> you're laughing already. We haven't even started. <laughs> You're pretty sympathetic to these guys, aren't you? Well, listen, uh, yes and no. I mean, no justice, no peace. Let me get that out right before we get started. The <laughs> show. But l listen, listen. this is kind of a ragtag group. The numbers have gone up and down. And you're, you're right, it's a fair hit to say they seem to want uh, 20 different things, some of which are contradictory to each other. But, you know, they do seem to be finally, after a couple of weeks in the streets, tapping into some emotion out there. And I believe, I don't know if you agree with me about this, but I believe that there is still across America a lot of frustration toward Wall Street, the belief that, hey, all the rest of us are suffering. Shouldn't those guys suffer a little bit? Well, th there's no doubt there's a lot of, of uh, frustration toward Wall Street. Uh, but by the same token, you know, I'm not sure if this is a grassroots uh, movement or not. But when I see Michael Moore go down there, when I see Susan Sarandon go down there, when I see unions start to support these guys, it feels like a typical leftist sort of event. That, uh, that we've seen before in different ways. Well, you, you're certainly right at the beginning. I mean, the first week of this was, uh, you know, pretty grungy kids. There was a topless demonstration of some of the women. I know that offends you, Charles. Um, but, but as the days are going on, I do sense a little bit of a broadening of these people. And we'll see whether they're too wacky to tap into that broader-based concern out there. And, you know, some of them are talking about some interesting stuff, maybe a, some kind of a transaction tax on Wall Street. How would that be? Ugh. Oh, no way. Come on, Alice. What are you talking about, a transaction <laughs> tax? Hey, but let me say this about that. I do agree with you at some level, and here is why. I think Wall Street, I think corporate America, they've all grown a little too arrogant. They're all overplaying their hand, and they're not hiring people. They're not putting people back to yes. work. You know, other signs of arrogance, Bank of America just last week saying, hey, we think we should, you should now pay money for using your debit card in the store. We're going to make you pay more for that. I don't think there's any sense of the reaction that they're getting out there in the real world where real pe people are, are going to the store, they're, they're filling up their tank with gas. And, and I think there needs to be some kind of, you know, really tough thinking about what they're doing and if it's adding to the bottom line of this country or taking away. Well, uh, well, well put, Jerry. And, and don't forget, too, this comes after the huge Wall Street bailout. You know, we gave them huge amounts of our money. We saved many of these big banks. And I think there is a persistent feeling out there. And it isn't just a bunch of topless chicks in Wall Street. It's, it's, it's people, real people out there, the people you're talking about, who say, you know, maybe they should do something for us in exchange for all that money we gave. I don't, yeah, I don't want anything free, Ellis. If you can't continuously point the finger at these banks. Well, I understand. Listen, people in business always bellyache about this stuff, and some, sometimes legitimately so. But I mean, don't they have some kind of responsibility? For instance, I'll, I'll give you one, one, one point. I think Jerry was hinting at it a second ago. Is that, you know, they really ought to lend some of this money to businesses that are growing, who need the money, who have <laughs> decent risk. I mean, they'll just be stingy, Ellis, aren't they? Ellis, Ellis, you know, it's so interesting because President Obama was swept into office railing against the reckless loans that Wall Street made in the first place. Well, you know, so, I little... mean, you can't have it both ways. <laughs> Tracy made well... this point. You can't punish the banks and at the same time expect Main Street to thrive. Charles, I'm a Goldilocks guy. I want it not too hot. I want it not too <laughs> cold. And you know what? We've seen them both. You're right. Maybe have a, have about just a little bit of rational business decision making. Is that too much to ask for? Uh, you know, I want to bring Nicole in. Nicole, my daughter uh, works for me and she's right on, right on, right on Broadway there. She told me in an email this morning that these kids have been very, very rude and somewhat intimidating. Uh, I'm not sure if you passed by them on the, on the way to the exchange, but if you have, can you tell us about what you think is going on with them? Well, it's not one day. It's been... <clears throat> Sorry, guys. It's not one day. It's been weeks, actually, that they've been outside. The barriers just keep getting bigger and, and farther away from the exchange. It's quite hard to navigate outside. They get quite loud outside sometimes. They don't quit. But uh, they were marching by the other day. All the cops were lined up, and they were saying something to the extent of banks got bailed out, we got left out. You, you know, I mean, uh, listen, uh, honestly, the real answer is let's get these banks back in the lending business, right? Helping companies grow treating treating customers in a rational way and yes exercise some prudence don't go off the deep end but i mean they kind of do owe us something we did sort of save their lives didn't we
Uh, again, Ellis, you know, first of all, I'm not pro. I wasn't for the bailouts, but I will tell you this much. You can't have it both I mean, ways. Every time a bank makes a loan, it is taking a certain amount of risk. What we are telling banks these days is that, A, you can only take, uh, you, you know, we're, we're narrowing the parameters of what risk they can take. And then we're saying once these risks even pay off, you're going to have to give up more for it. So, uh, you know, you're putting them in a position where they're in business, by the way, to lend money. That is the only reason someone goes into the banking industry is to lend out money. I think they would love to do it if they weren't going to be villainized, demonized, and it wasn't all going to be taken from them at the end of the day. Well, Give you before, the last word. Before I'm out here, maybe we can all do Nicole's chant together. What is it? Banks got bailed out. We got left out. You want to say that with me? No, no. We'll stick. You know what? We'll stick to the first one. No justice, <laughs> no peace. You can send Al Sharpton as residual.